Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our 2021 volunteer committee orientation and kickoff for the year. I want to start by saying Happy New Year. I think we're still close enough in that new year where we can say, still say that. Um, and I'm going to ask everybody to um, make sure you're muted. Well, you're probably mute by default, um, but just in case you're not, to so make sure you're muted. Um, we're really glad you're here to talk about the work we're going to do this year. And of course, that that you are going to be a major part of it. Uh, so you're going to hear from several of us today about what's going on for the year to come and your role. Um, and then we're going to have Q&A at the end, plenty of time for that. So as you think of questions, please enter those into the Q&A function. Uh, we're also going to have some information in the chat and you can talk there as well. Um, so without further ado, I want to tell you who you're going to hear from today. First up, we're going to have Adam Hardy. Adam is at Ross Shepard Architects, and he's our immediate past president from the year 2020. Our 2021 president is Rachel Johnson, and Nicholas Remus is our advocacy engagement director. So our first one out of the gate, as we said earlier, is Adam Harding. Go ahead, Adam. Thanks, Mike. Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. Thanks for being here today. Uh, so, um last year around this time the board did a deep dive into strategic thinking about who we are as aia colorado and what's important to us and where we are going and so with that we decided to reset our mission and our vision and our values um so we released those and talked about them about midway through the year last year and this is where we're going. So our mission moving forward is to activate Colorado's architecture community to advance positive change. That's our core focus. That's what we do. Our vision, this is where we're going, is to create a movement of change agents to broaden the impact of architecture. And our values, who we are, this is what we live by, and this is um, how we think about the work that we do. So we connect. We believe that a connected community of architects can do more than any individual. We advocate. We find ways for architecture to help make things right in our society. We celebrate. Architecture is serious business, but we honor having fun and sharing success. We advance. We move forward with purpose, never satisfied with the status quo. And we catalyze. We work to equip the architectural community to set change in motion. So that's uh, where we're going. And, and we, we took that and we want to live by this and we want to uh, think about everything we do with this in the back of our mind. And so we got a lot of stuff done last year uh, with our committees, with the board, uh, even though it was a weird year and this is still a weird year with the pandemic, we had to pivot. And, but all of our committees got a lot of great things done with these, um, with these new core focus and vision and values uh, in mind moving forward. So I want to thank the 2020 volunteers for all the work they did. And I want to welcome all the 2021 volunteers. And I'm excited about the work that we are going to be doing this year. So without further ado, I'd like to hand the reins over to our new president, Rachel, and have her explain more about what's going to happen. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Uh, thanks for the recap. Now, in looking at this new year, uh, 2021, we are here. Uh, let's look at who we are as an association and statewide membership first. Uh, in total, we are 2,400 members uh, across all corners of the state. 75% are AIA credentialed, 18% are associates, and 7% are emeritus. Uh, in age group, our largest age range is between 30 and 39 years old. And like any good bell curve will show us, uh, <laughs> our youngest and oldest members represent the fewest number of members uh, in our association. Now, regarding ethnicity or diversity of our membership, um, this is only a small picture of that. Uh, it is a pretty important one. Like in most of the United States and across our industry, um, we're not necessarily reflecting the true diversity of our general uh, Colorado community, but we do look forward to increasing our reach to those who have not necessarily had access, exposure, 
means or frankly interest in our industry in the past. So our uh, Justice, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion Committee gets to help us focus on this um, and perhaps uh, find some, some more folks out there who want to help affect our environment. That's a good looking group of folks. Um, in, in the interest of looking at our qualifications based board, um, we are small and mighty, um, but we do see a lot of experts from many different areas. We see representation from different sized firms from across the state. Um, we welcome a range of ages, tenures, backgrounds, and I'm really excited to work with these guys. And um, I'm thrilled to hear that they're excited to, to be on the board and to serve you all. Also small and mighty, even smaller and even mightier, uh, our tiny little staff is very powerful. Um, you guys probably know all these folks or have heard of them or have heard from them. Um, they are finding a new, new uh, path, new ways to spread the wealth of their knowledge and their expertise as well. We've already consolidated our committee work um, and we are looking for more effective and efficient ways to make this work manageable for the four of them. Um, it's a lot of work. They spend a lot of time with us as volunteers and it's a, it's a really great group. We're a lucky team here. All right, regarding you all, compared to last year, we've seen a significant increase in our volunteer applications that we received. Uh, last year, I think Adam said we had 148 volunteers and this year we are just shy of 200. So we are, um, it's a big group. It's a big group, there's a lot to do. And we're also looking at some new positions. So we've got our uh, advisory councils that you'll see this year, that, that's basically representation on a local level so that we can reach folks outside of the Denver metro area, or this, um, this urban space. We also have designated editorial represent representatives. So we are looking to listen and share stories from architects across the state and really understand what our architecture community here in Colorado is and who we all are. A little different this year, you'll also see emerging professionals represented on each committee. So rather than um, keeping them in their own little group, we really do want fresh ideas and fresh, fresh minds on each committee, um, active and fully participatory in everything. So while we've seen a few EP champions in the past, um, please welcome the new folks that you get to see on your committee. And then lastly, um, I think we've been pretty consistent in this realm, but we are once again welcoming volunteer representation from across the state. So we have a very diverse in terms of locale uh, group this year. So Adam shared a little bit about our vision, focus and values. In addition to those, we uh, identified three imperatives. So these are um, our most important and urgent work. And while these three things might take years to at least get a handle on, um, they will never end. This work will never go away. Uh, hopefully at some point it will become habit. Hopefully at some point we can graduate them to simply our day-to-day -day work. But these are urgent, these are important, and these will be our imperatives for um, our work moving forward. So we are definitely bringing back the Committee on the Environment or COAT and those guys will champion our work in environmental stewardship. Um, we're placing more emphasis on our awards, professional development programs, advocacy initiatives, and operations in this realm too. So please stay in tune on that um, and know that if you're on the COAT committee, you're essential. If you're not on the COAT committee, you are also essential in this realm. Um, we're all going to play a part in all three of these imperatives. Our JEDI committee, um, it's been a robust group for the last three years. Everyone on that committee is passionate and that's one of our largest committees we've seen. Um, but it's also one of the first committees of its kind uh, in AIA chapters nationwide. Um, so we are among some of those big, big uh, chapters that is, has been doing this work for a while. Um, 
They also will be looking to do this work in all areas um, and bringing just, equitable, diverse, and inclusive practices to our professional environment and output. And then lastly, we are focusing on establishing a culture of belonging. We are a big state. We are spread out. Um, so this is an important one. While we have a lot of members here in Denver, that doesn't necessarily mean we are a Denver association. We are a Colorado association. So we do have a couple things going on. We've got our editorial representatives on all committees. So we are trying to help connect your work to a broader audience than just the volunteers or just your local environment. Our, our, new, our new local advisory councils begin to make sure we are making an impact statewide um, and reaching numbers even in those small towns or uh, across the continental divide. Our office relocation task force will determine the future of our physical presence and career leadership group will develop strategic direction for supporting our members um, throughout a profession's life cycle. I wanna say thank you to all of you. Um, please do good work. Be proud that you are here. Um, we are proud of you and we're thrilled to have you. Um, and in the names of Amanda Gorman, who we all got to enjoy on Wednesday, there is always light if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. So please go forth, AI Colorado Volunteers uh, of 2021 and be the light. Thank you. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna hand it off to Mike, who will talk a little more specifics on your job and your task at hand. Thanks, Rachel. Um, great way to end it. Um, one more quote that's not nearly as good, but I think certainly applies in that note of gratitude to all of you as um, in the words of the great mind, Dr. Seuss, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And so we were able last year, as Adam said, to accomplish so much and better the lives of not only the organization, but everyone we serve. And the momentum is building. Uh, we're super gratified by the increase in interest in serving on committees. So we've been able to find a home for everyone who wants to serve. And I think that translates into getting even more done. So a little bit about AI Colorado. Um, it's been around quite a while. So happy 123rd birthday to the organization. Uh, actual articles of incorporation um, under lock and key so they don't uh, get lost or stolen. Um, or worn out from 1898. So you are part of a long trajectory and a really good legacy of leadership that you're stepping into. Um, but it's not a loosey goosey thing. You know, if you're around that long and you're part of an organization that has its own traditions and culture and history, there are things that go with it. And not all of them are created and influenced by us. So I just want to do a few of the uh, legal disclaimers, so you have those straight. Um, first thing to know is we are a not-for-profit, um, a 501c6 C tax status. That doesn't mean that we can't make money, it's just that we're not organized to turn a profit or serve shareholders. Uh, we promote the organization of 501c6 is a trade organization, um, trade or professional organization, that is eligible to advocate. So obviously we do a lot of advocacy and our profession is architecture. The second thing you know is we are bound by federal and state laws, the sh thou shalt nots. Um, I'd say for you to keep in mind first and foremost, anytime you gather um, either officially or even unofficially and say that you're talking about AIA, it's that we do not want to violate the Antitrust Act. Um, the Justice Department is um, someone we want to avoid hearing from, uh, and we don't want to be ever accused of trying to manipulate the practice of architecture from a market point of view to fix prices or get more fees. Um, that needs to take place outside of this organization in your day-to-day -day interactions with uh, clients. Of course, anti-discrimination laws are important. Um, campaign finance, not-for-profit, authorization, those kind of things. I'd say there's two items, though, that will make sure you don't have to worry about violating any of these laws. The first is just be a decent human being. And the second thing 
this is a, a weird phrase that nobody quite knows what it means, but it's this concept of apparent authority. What that means is who has the right to speak for the organization. Uh, and it's not every individual member or even every individual committee. Uh, whatever is said, when you say with that, AIA Colorado thinks, or as a person who serves AIA Colorado, I want to you know, hold this or put this out there, you gotta be careful with that and make sure that it's actually something that the organization can stand behind. Otherwise, whatever you say in that uh, forum, can be, people can hold that to us. So apparent authority means the organization speaks for itself, but not necessarily its individual members. Then finally, we're chartered by the National Organization, the American Institute of Architects, makes a lot of sense. Um, and with that, like a university, we have accreditation to adhere to those accreditation and get the right to be a chapter. We have eight core service areas where we have to um, not only meet minimum standards, but operate in a, in a professionally competent and excellent way. So um, just be, no, be aware that, that we do that. And some of the things that we're operating under um, are not necessarily of our choice, but we want to we wanted make sure that we stay uh, above board and professional. Now for you as an individual volunteer, there's a few things we'd like you to do. Um, and you're already doing the first one, attending this orientation. So congratulations, you're well on your way. Uh, we want you to attend regular virtual meetings of the committee. Um, you'll see a schedule later in the participation where you can see how those are gonna roll out for the year and hold those on, hold those on your calendar. The key concept here is you're an ambassador to AI Colorado. Um, as you heard earlier, we have 2,400 members and about 200 volunteers. So that means you're representing uh, more than just yourself and you're able to talk to more than the people that you work with day to day. So we hope that you'll take the, the things you learn, the information you have access to and share that with a broader audience. You're gonna hear more later about how to use Basecamp. That's our primary mode of organizing and communicating. And then finally, you represent the organization at the level of the committee and events in your community. I talked about this a little bit already, um, but we're really proud that you have stepped forward. And it is a formal process, something that you can, you can say, um, I have been chosen to represent and lead this work. Um, so we hope that you'll, you'll brag about it and share it uh, on your social media networks, uh, share it with your friends and contacts and family and say, I am part of this bigger group that's doing things to change society through the architecture profession. Um, we all are operating under individual topic areas, but that doesn't mean that we operate in isolation or in silos. So we wanna be interdependent. Um, you'll have a staff liaison to help you in your support. And we want to engage with other committees where that makes sense. So even though you have a schedule that has times reserved and available to you, that doesn't mean you can't meet outside of that with other groups. And then uh, just keep those mission, vision, and values in mind. Um, they're not just for the board, they're for everybody in the organization. As you think about your year, it kind of falls into some, some phases. So the first phase I would say will be organize and strategize. Get your committee structure together, um, know your schedule, hold those dates on the calendar. Um, and then the next phase, is publish and present. We had the opportunity under COVID last year to really change how our programming was done. And we did about 80 different programs that were um, done online. And almost all of that content came from our members, came from your groups, your volunteer committees, uh, and helped share knowledge, skills, resources with the rest of the membership at large. So um, through the editorial committee reps, you'll be have access to our communication platforms to publish but we do intend to fill up our calendar again this year with presentations for members from our committees. And then one of the last phases you need to think about is reflect and re recruit. Um, on November 10th, our call for nominations will open up for next year. So if you've had a great experience, we want you to come back. If you have other people that would be a good participant to join in the effort, please let them know about it. And then your reflection should lead to a report out on December 15th when we have our end of year celebration. Do a committee recap and celebrate all the work that, that was done for the profession. 
before we get there, I want to talk about some of the takeaways from last year. Um, we had a training session that many of you were probably part of where we asked people to share their volunteer memories, either good or bad. So we've all volunteered a lot of different places, not just in AIA. And um, we wanted to capture those memorable moments. So I just wanted to share what the most commonly listed attributes were uh, last year. The things that we aspire to emulate were when you feel valued, when you're included, when you did work that mattered, when it was collaborative and fun. So try and keep those concepts in mind as you gather this year. Uh, the second thing is what you don't want to remember or a negative memorable experience that happened in other volunteer um, roles that people had throughout their lives. And these things we want to avoid at all costs. People felt a negative memory when it was a waste of time, when it was just busy work, when it was dominated by one or a few voices, when it seemed like a click and it wasn't open to new, new ideas. So um, the positive and the negative are what we want to keep in mind. Do more of the positive, avoid all the negative. Um, so with that, let's talk about the logistics of how you organize yourself and hear more about Basecamp with Nick. Thanks, Mike. Um, hello all, Nick Remus, uh, Advocacy Engagement Director, and um, I'm going to walk us through Basecamp. Uh, if you are a returning 2020 volunteer, uh, this will all look very familiar to you. Um, but Basecamp is a web-based project management website uh, that AIA Colorado has a subscription to. So um, we use this to set up what Basecamp calls a project uh, for each committee. And uh, this will help us stay in touch uh, between committee meetings and track progress and goals and deadlines and store documents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through pretty quickly the, the general uh, capabilities that it has. So first up is uh, what Basecamp calls Campfire, which is basically a, um, a running chat feature that everyone on the committee will, will have access to. So if you um, wanna start an informal conversation, you can do that there. Um, just kind of a running chat for, for that group for anything you may want to uh, discuss. Um, after that is the message board. So this is a little more formal than Campfire. Um, you, uh, it's good for announcements. It's good for when the committee needs to have a formal discussion on a specific topic. So uh, for example, let's say my government affairs committee is evaluating a bill that was introduced in the state legislature. I'll create a message board topic on that bill and I can get input from the group uh, there. And then we can all keep that conversation uh, tracked within that message that's posted. Um, but that's not just reserved for staff members. Uh, if you find an article you want to share with the group or, or want people's input on something specific, uh, anyone on the committee can uh, create a message board post uh, for that discussion. Uh, next on the project management side is to-do lists. So um, if your committee meeting uh, ends and you've got a task to, com to complete uh, between meetings, the best way to uh, help the group stay accountable to those tasks is to uh, create a to-do list uh, with tasks in Basecamp. Uh, you assign it to people, you create deadlines, uh, you can trigger uh, custom notifications. So if someone else on the committee is waiting for you to finish a task, uh, you can set the notification so that they will see what you've done. Uh, and then they can do uh, whatever uh, their task is if it's reliant upon yours. Uh, and so uh, this is really as useful as people's willingness to, to remember to make those tasks in the first place. So that's something we want to, our committees to do after their meetings is to uh, go in and populate that list for anything that might be upcoming. Uh, that they want to track. Next is the uh, calendar function. Uh, Basecamp calls it a schedule. And so, um, you know, we don't know who all is using uh, Outlook or personal calendars or email addresses and all that. So for important uh, dates, we like to populate the schedule within Basecamp. So uh, when you get invited, you will see your uh, monthly meeting schedule for the entire year. Uh, but you can also add key deadlines in here. And um, as you can see on the screen there, if tasks have been assigned, those will show up in the schedules uh, feed. 
Um, you'll also notice that you can uh, export uh, the events on a schedule into your own calendar. Um, that's a, it's a useful tool, but it's worth remembering that Basecamp can't sync with Outlook or other calendars. So if new items get added to the schedule, they won't automatically show up in your own calendar. Uh, and finally, uh, the other really important section is docs and files. So um, Basecamp has a really good drag and drop function to keep uh, files and organize them in their own folders. So this is useful for things like agendas and minutes. Uh, any, any PDFs that anyone thinks needs uh, should be shared with the group. Um, it's great. We can, uh, we can embed Google Docs or uh, Office Online documents so everyone knows where to access those if you have a running list or spreadsheet that's shared by the group. Uh, and so this really helps make sure that we're not using uh, individual people's Dropbox account or kind of sending things through emails and losing track of what's the newest version of what. Uh, this really helps make sure that everything that the group needs is uh, in the same place. And then this will help us uh, preserve those documents over time. So, so why do we care? Uh, you know, really, um, we want to make sure that since everyone's working together, we have all the information you need between meetings in one place. Uh, this really helps us out on the staff side. It's very easy for us to manage uh, as many projects as we need. Um, so we can organize folks into groups. Uh, and then it helps you all communicate through a shared uh, platform. Um, I am happy to help anyone with tech support or questions getting started. Um, happy to, to be a resource there. Uh, and I also want to note a couple other quick things. Um, you know, we AIA Colorado holds the account. So all you will need is an email address that I can send the invite to you. Uh, you will not need your own um, subscription or anything like that to Basecamp. And then also, uh, in addition to your own project, we uh, will create an all committee project uh, where everyone who's on any committee will be in that uh, additional project where um, you'll see you'll receive uh, some occasional communications from staff that are relevant to all committees rather than us having to go into each individually. Uh, upcoming events we think community members might be interested in. And also you can have the same direct communication with your peers through that project if they're in a different committee, if you see something that might be of interest to a larger group. Thanks Nick for walking people through Basecamp and um, just wanna reemphasize what but Nick said he really is available for any questions you may have offline and knows this backwards and forwards. Some of you probably already used Basecamp before, so it should look familiar. We haven't um, we haven't enabled any custom features. It's the you know out of the box program that, that lots of people use. And if it's new to you, uh, as it was to me um, when I came here, it's not that hard if I can figure it out. Just about anybody can. Um, so we look forward to seeing all the work that happens on Basecamp. Um, going forward. And if you have any future questions or more detailed information, you can ask Nick. Um, you're also going to get an invitation by email to join your Basecamp team. So be on the lookout for that as a next step. Okay, want to walk through the committees a bit. Um, one of the first things you'll do in that uh, organize and strategize phase of your, of your term of office is to um, elect your leadership. Um, we're going to leave it up to each group to determine who does what. So um, you can see sort of the org chart as it, as it sits here. Um, you'll want to have a chair you know, or, and or a vice chair. Um, there will be an editorial representative. That person is already designated to serve on your committee and your members are appointed. Um, a lot of folks will also have a secretary to take notes. I've seen it done both ways. Either it's a standing position that serves throughout the entire year. And we have other committees that they take turns and make sure that before the meeting gets started in earnest and, and any discussion gets going, that someone steps up to volunteer to kind of take notes and capture what happens at the meeting so it can be preserved in the base camp and shared with people who, who may, have been, may, may have not been able to make that meeting but still want to see what happened. Uh, the meetings for committees will kick off uh, February. So um, the first one will be February 4th uh, and then proceed afterwards uh, on successive Thursdays. So you want to Define the work early on. If you have a scope, get familiar with the scope. If you're a new group, it's up to you to help define that scope of work. Of course, we talked earlier about uh, keeping in mind how you present it to a wider audience of the members. 
Uh, and then uh, in November and December, we're recruiting new members and returning members and then celebrating it at the end of the year. Here's all the volunteer teams that we have this year. Some are very small, you know, one or two appointees, like say a licensing advisor or a disaster response coordinator. Some of them are really big. So we've got um, government affairs and COPE, for example, are, are in the neighborhood of 20 members. Um, there's a lot going on, as you can see earlier, 177 members doing work is, uh, is a handful. And thank goodness you're able to give that helping hand. Okay, schedules. This is something that uh, we've tried to make as simple and streamlined as possible. Every committee meeting happens on a Thursday. So, um, and the other thing is, it'll be the same Thursday every month um, or whatever frequency you have to meet and the same time slot. So on the first Thursdays of the month, being February 4th, uh, we're gonna have awards committee in the morning, government affairs committee midday, and the health knowledge community in the afternoon or evening. It's gonna be, uh, that's something else you'll, you'll determine with your staff liaison is that exact time that you wanna meet on a regular basis. Then going to the second Thursdays, we'll have committee in the environment in the morning. Local advisory councils um, will meet midday and in the afternoon because we have four of those. So we wanna make sure there's enough time slots for them to get their work done. Third Thursdays, we have business of architecture, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and followed up with editorial. Then your fourth Thursdays, we're gonna have our board related meetings. And then at midday, we'll have our office and career task forces and in the afternoon, the conference committee. You'll be able to see, by the way, on the website, and we'll probably drop this in the chat, uh, a link to the page of all those committees, um, not just by title, but who is serving on them as well. So you can see uh, what members you're gonna be serving alongside. And uh, if you're curious um, where people are serving in other committees, you can see that as well. So here's what I don't expect you to, to be able to read all this. But I, it is instructive to see in one place how much work is happening over the course of the year in all these different places. So it's a lot of meetings, but um, we're gonna get a lot of work done too. So it kind of shows um, the total picture of everything that's happening this year. And of course, you're gonna get that sent to you. So the other thing you are gonna get in addition to your invitation to sign on to your Basecamp account and join your committee team, they are, are going to be calendar invites so that you can have these dates saved uh, with the specific time slots involved and, and days that are set aside for you. So um, those are the next steps that you wanna look for um, is an invitation from your staff liaison to Basecamp and the calendar invites. And the next step for you is share this information uh, within your own personal and professional networks and, uh, and get ready to do the work. So um, before we move any further, we do want to know if you have any questions. So I'll stop sharing and uh, we'll be opening up the floor for questions and comments. And we'll bring back the rest of the panelists too. Okay, and yes, Amy has in the chat dropped the link for all the volunteers across every committee. Okay, so if you have a question, you can use the Q&A function or we'll watch the chat too for comments. Um, I will kick it off with um, remembering some of the comments. So this is the second session we've had in this um, uh, of the two. So I want to kick off with one question that came up and that is, is there going to be any other training for new members? Um, and the answer to that is no, not necessarily formal training. So this will be the first one. Um, if you know of anybody that wants to know more about the committees and couldn't attend it, it will be recorded. We'll have that up as early as early next week. But if you are new to the committee process and just want to get a sense of what Colorado is up to, you can watch on our YouTube page, the State of the Association from last year and also the Year in Celebration. Year in Celebration, of course, had a lot of those committee reports included in it. Uh, and also, if you are, we had a huge number of new attendees and applications um, for committee participation. I think it was like something like 60, 40, 60% new and or 60% uh, returning members and 40% new. So if you're one of those returning members, uh, reach out to the new members and make them feel welcome and, and offer to answer questions. 
Okay, questions coming in now. Um, will Basecamp login be sent by email? Yes, uh, your staff liaisons will reach out to you, uh, I think early next week with uh, Basecamp information and meeting schedule and everything you need to uh, get that access. Okay, and we have a question. Um, of course, everybody's wondering this, do you anticipate any in-person events? Um, we will have at least one in-person event. Um, our awards last year was done um, in a socially distanced fashion, but where people could actually show up, uh, see and be seen uh, along with their colleagues. So we are intending to do that again. We'll have our awards sometime in August, date to be determined um, at a drive-in theater. So you'll see the award program like you would if it were at, um, you know, as we've done it in, in years before COVID, um, but we're gonna do it outside and we're hoping to enhance it a little bit with some more um, food and beverage options. Uh, so that's one of the in-person events. If you're wondering about um, the committee meetings themselves, do we anticipate any in-person committee meetings? Um, we're not gonna start the year with in-person events um, for committee interaction. We're gonna continue to use, uh, it, you'll have a, access to a Zoom channel that AI has, a, AI Colorado has a subscription to. So we'll host all those, we'll set it up for you. Um, it'll just be a link to drop in when you, when the time comes. Um, we're gonna probably keep doing all meetings on Zoom even after the public health guidelines ease a little bit because what we found is it really helps that accessibility to people from all over the state. It, it lowers the time out of office and the commitment that you have to make to it. So we'll continue to offer that to everyone, um, but we will at some point start to get back to face-to-face -face meetings and interaction. And uh, even with that, some of that will be at the office, the AI Colorado office in Denver, and others we intend to actually take to different parts of the state. So we want to um, make sure that people can access it, whether they wanna be there in person or remotely, um, and not just have everything in Denver. But um, no, no date to share with you on that yet. We're playing it by ear just like everybody else. Okay, question, do we know what percent of licensed architects in Colorado are in AIA? I don't know it exactly, but I can give you a really close ballpark. It, it goes between 50 and 55%, um, depending on the year, uh, depending on how many, um, uh, when, when the renewal deadline for licensure is and where people are in continuing education. Uh, so that's, a, we got about a half percent uh, penetration rate, they call it, of membership. Um, that's both good and bad. It's, it's really consistent with where national is. If you look at the membership across the whole country, um, I, I'm a glass half full person. I tend to see that as we've got a lot of potential for growth in membership. Do we have access to the 2020 committee meeting notes through Basecamp? Yeah, I'll take that one. So um, we're going to leave it up to staff liaisons to determine if we want to keep the same project and change the rosters or create a new project for the group so you can start fresh. Uh, that's not going to be uh, consistent between committees. That's going to be whatever makes the most sense for that group. Um, ultimately, though, uh, we will still have that, pro that old project if we go to a new version for 2021 and uh, we'll be able to um, preserve any documents that have been in there. Um, I think in a lot of cases, it's going to make sense to keep on going with the same project and just update the rosters so uh, people don't have to refigure out where everything is. But again, uh, that's going to make uh, sense for some projects and some are going to want to start fresh. Let's see. I'm trying to think of some questions we had yesterday. Um, oh, I want to let people know about the um, publication schedule. So if there's something that you do want to put out to the membership at large um, in our regular newsletters, we have we publish those on the first and third Wednesdays um, of every month. And we're always looking for good content. So um, I know in the past we had a plan to designate a yearly calendar where we'd say um, to, let's say, the Government Affairs Committee. Um, your newsletter article will be in the third Wednesday in June. Um, and then we probably wouldn't talk about the committee any other day. We just divided all the committees up uh, on a calendar basis. Um, 
On the plus side, everybody got their chance to be in the newsletter. On the downside, it may not have been the right time to talk about what they were doing. And there could have been more than one occasion for them to share what they're working on. So we've kind of gotten away from that, which doesn't mean we aren't going to talk about committees. Uh, we hope that we can talk about committees more. Um, so if there's something you want to communicate right away, um, let your editorial rep on the committee know about it. Um, if for some reason it's, it happens between committees, you can still let the editorial rep know and also Amy Dvorak on staff. And we'll try and get it flowed into our publication schedule as soon as possible. It may not be right away because we do adhere to that first and third Wednesdays, Wednesday cycle, but we'll get it in as soon as it makes sense. And then of course the, the uh, website and social media, we're able to do that on a more frequent basis. Uh, again, we just ask that you go through your editorial committee, rep and Amy. Okay, another question is, are there director liaisons on each committee this year? Um, I think that's a question about board director liaisons on each committee this year. Rachel, you want to take that one? Yes, sir. Uh, no, we will not have designated board directors on each committee, though we do encourage our entire board to participate or attend as many different committee meetings just to get a feel for what, what people are up to. Um, we have split up our board into three different task forces or committees this year. Um, and that includes our relocation um, effort, our leadership or um, career. Mike, you're gonna have to help me with the names of these because I know they're brand new, but our career development group. Um, and then also the advocacy I'm remembering. The local councils. Local councils. Okay, so um, basically our board will represent um, on each of those committees. So we're split up into groups of, uh, I think, four or three groups of, of the board. Um, but please do reach out to all of us and invite us to special meetings that you might have um, and keep us updated. I want to I want to hear what you guys are all doing um, way before the end of the year when we all gather to celebrate what we've done. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, a question that we talked about yesterday that I thought was really interesting was, um, so we've got some really seasoned volunteers on here um, that have seen a lot and done a lot within AIA in a variety of roles. And so I wanna ask each of them, what has your volunteer experience been like and what are some memories of, of what it's done for you either personally or professionally? Adam, you wanna start? Sure. Uh, so I got involved in AA probably about 10 years ago, and I joined the Emerging Professionals Committee, and then I chaired that committee for a couple of years, and then I got on the board as the treasurer and then the president. And so it's, it's been this kind of stepping stone of leadership opportunities for me throughout the years um, outside of my office, which has, I think, directly influenced my leadership role and how I lead in my office. And that growth has kind of been um, side by side throughout the years. And so it's, um, it's been impactful, um, not only um, in my office and my firm, but uh, I find giving back to our profession very rewarding. Um, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. And so, um, really think about what change and what good you could do for architecture and our communities and um, our our earth as well. So. Well said. Um, Rachel, how about you? Uh, yeah, I, I have similar though um, divergent experiences, Adam. I got involved in AIS, uh, what? 13 years ago, um, was pretty heavily involved there. I didn't really get into AIA um, direct leadership or volunteerism until I moved to DC and participated in AIA uh, Northern Virginia and then AIA DC there and um, got to 
luckily be a part of the Christopher Kelly program in DC. Um, even though I lived in a different state and uh, really built some good relationships with that program that kind of kicked off my, uh, my work with AIA or my passion for what AIA can provide for me. Um, well, my participation in AIA hasn't necessarily launched my career or the, my career trajectory. It has definitely served as kind of a tangential um, passion project for me. I really do love what I get to do with you all. And like Adam said, it, it really is rewarding to get to think about my career and my work, um, but more in a humanity-driven or community-driven way. Um, I love the glimpse into kind of politics of what we do and um, leadership realm of sitting on a board. And I really do enjoy everyone I get to meet. So each and every one of you, um, I'm excited to meet new folks. I'm excited to greet again those folks I already know. Um, and then lastly, AI has also allowed me to keep in contact with everyone I've met nationwide. So from my Christopher Kelly program when I was a scholar um, back when I lived in DC, folks I've met going to conferences across the nation. Um, I stay in contact and it's mostly through AIA work or AIA events that I get to do that. Uh, so I've, I've been involved for a long time um, and I keep getting asked back. So I'm here and I love it. Um, and I really do enjoy each and every one of you too. Well, you're our number one volunteer this year, so thanks for taking on that leadership role. How about you, Nick? Uh, a lot of people don't realize that you're not only a staff member, you're a member alongside your colleagues and have been a volunteer before you joined the staff. Yeah, I've been volunteering since uh, right after the AIA convention was in Denver, which was eight or nine years ago now. Uh, was looking for ways to get involved after having a great experience there and saw the Government Affairs Committee and went, well, you know, I, I'm really into um, what's going on at the federal level, but I don't know a whole lot about what's, you know, what's what's the legislature like in the state of Colorado? How do things work here? So uh, contacted AI Colorado, was invited to attend a meeting, and then I think it was like two years before I, I missed a single GAC meeting, ended up being the chair, uh, started reading bills with the legislative subcommittee, going to the Capitol, um, had a great experience there. And then uh, three years ago, the opportunity uh, um, arrived so that I could, uh, Take the staff position as advocacy engagement director and kind of do that <laughs> as my job instead of just uh, on the side. So um, GAC has yeah really been my my main point of uh, interaction with uh, AIA Colorado. Uh, I've also done some uh, ARE uh, teaching uh, back in the ARE ASAP program. I, I managed a couple groups there, um, helped out with some of the uh, courses and then have been getting involved in other committees now that I'm on staff and I'm a uh, committee liaison. So it's been a great opportunity to learn more about code and been involved in a couple of our knowledge communities. And it's great to do that in addition to being on staff. Thanks, Nick. Um, we're, we really benefit by people who have such insight into the profession being on the inside. And, you know, Nick's not the only one. Amy Dvorak um, was actually a co-chair of one of our committees an associate member as well, and has joined our staff this past year. So um, I can say with confidence that everybody on the staff team has an appreciation for and true insight into what the member experience is. And, uh, you know, for, for the other two of us, Amy Flagriff and I, we're serial volunteers as well, um, have volunteered at a number of stops along the way with national and other components. Um, so we bring that experience to you. And uh, I'm, I'm my, what I've gotten out of volunteering that I didn't even bargain for when I first started doing it was um, some real friendships that have lasted even longer than uh, some of the committee's own existence. So uh, those committees and task forces come and go. Um, some of course are still around, but uh, the relationships have endured and that's been a real, um, real plus that I didn't even uh, count on. And we do wanna say, we expect this to be a two-way relationship. We're not um, asking you to volunteer and only have it benefit us. Uh, we know that you get something out of it as well. Uh, there's almost nothing that you'll, you'll get 
in your service as a volunteer that's privileged information or that can't be shared with someone else. Um, you may get it before the rest of the membership of the profession does, but this is a benefit, a right and privilege of serving as a member to be able to apply for these committees and serve on them. Um, I think the only occasions where we say no is if someone says, I want to I want to be on an AI Colorado committee and we see that they're not an AI Colorado member. Um, other than that, we want our membership to take a take the reins of leading it and get something out of it. So if you get more attention in your firm or in the profession or in the wider community at large, that's great. If it helps you get a promotion, that's great. Um, we don't want that to be the primary motivation, but we do understand that not only are we benefiting, but you will benefit as well. Okay, any more questions that have come in? I think we got them all. Um, is there anything else that we can think of as panelists that we might want to share before we um, wrap up? It's probably worth just saying one more time that, yeah, uh, after this, uh, staff will reach out to you uh, next week with uh, all the information so that you're ready to go. So you have those uh, that committee schedule base camp access. Um, I will, or your staff liaison will send uh, the emails to the address you gave us in your application. Uh, if you want to use a different email for Basecamp, because it does have a lot of notifications, which we think are really beneficial, but you may want them on your personal or your work, whichever you prefer. Um, happy to work with you on that. That's an easy change on our end. Thanks for the Thank you, to add, are we maintaining the all committee stream on Basecamp? So there will be a place uh, for us all, all every, uh, all 177 of us or like the whole volunteer group to collaborate and share things. So if you do have some expertise or some ideas or have come across a book or an article or a speaker, um, share it. Um, you're not on one committee, you're a volunteer for AI Colorado standing on one committee, but we are all here and we are all one group, so please use that forum to uh, share and talk, talk and get to know one another. Yeah, and it's an extraordinary, I mean, I've been around a lot of places and seen a lot of different chapters in AIA and this is a chapter that has an extraordinary amount of volunteers um, as a percentage of their membership, um, which is fantastic. Um, there's, there's a bit of management that goes with it, you know, scheduling and supporting and all of that. Um, making the time to do it well, but we get so much more out of it as an organization profession uh, than we could have done if you just said, oh, we got staff for that or let the board handle that. Um, the fact that we've got 177 volunteer positions outside of those two groups is, is really remarkable. So um, it just speaks to all of you stepping up and being willing to do that. And uh, we can't wait to see what we accomplish together. We've got one more comment here. Um, can you share what the firm and individual membership receptions have been to the new sustainability Jedi and inclusion agendas? Um, who wants to take that one? I used to have those numbers top of mind on where we are. Um, I'll try and find them while somebody starts answering that one. Maybe Nick. Um, you know, it's been positive with my group. So I'm, you know, I'm liaison for COAT, uh, which we called Sustainability Working Group last year and Government Affairs Committee. And I, I think that those uh, have been um, good guiding uh, directives for my groups and helping us understand what's, what's a priority for the organization. Uh, and I think that I uh, had good buy-in from the members that the, those, uh, those made sense to them. When we started this imperative last year, it of course wasn't brand new to us. Um, environmental stewardship has been something that's been on, on our minds as a profession for a long time, but it really recalibrated the work we did over the course of the year. Um, I mentioned earlier, we did 80 different programs um, for our members. The largest single category of programming was in this topic of sustainability uh, professional development. So uh, we knew there was a desire for that to happen. And so we helped provide that. Of course, we're not done. Um, some of it was geared toward the why, you know, 
trying to inspire people to get behind this idea. And the rest of it was, okay, I'm, I'm already bought in. How can I take myself and my firm further? And so I think we're going to move um, more in that direction, away from trying to sell people on the idea and start hoping that people get it and give them the tools to take it further. Um, the other thing too that we can, we're looking at to measure the uptake and the adoption of it is the 2030 commitment. So AIA has had something for, for a number of years now, over 10 years where you could, um, as a firm, say that you're gonna measure your goals for net zero um, or measure your projects against net zero um, with the goal of being completely even and carbon neutral by 2030. And so um, we have in the last couple of years doubled um, on an annual basis, the number of firms from Colorado that have signed on that 2030 commitment. That sounds great. Uh, the downside though is it's not a lot in total. So we've got like um, maybe about 50 firms, 50, 60 firms who have done that. Um, that's about 10% of the architecture firms in the state of Colorado. So we've got a ways to go, but we're, we're on our way. And I can speak to the Jedi reception too. Um, I think for uh, AI, AI Colorado is a, is a leader in the region, um, specifically on Jedi, we have been asked to speak uh, to other chapters membership to other firms. Um, so we've, I will say the Jedi committee, I'm not gonna speak for myself, but the, the committee has been asked to speak and share resources, research, um, how did we get started? What should we do next? Um, we've had some AIA chapters reach out and say, how can I start my own committee? And I think 2020 kind of brought about a um, sense of that this conversation is a no-brainer and this, we're a little late to the party. So uh, I have seen people kind of relieved that we're talking about it and relieved that the industry is addressing this and it's not up to individual firms to lead this effort. Um, so we're kind of all along for the ride right now and, and all marching together. Um, some folks in front of others, some folks are later to the party and some are um, participating. So you see a lot of firms have jumped in as well. So um, while it's not necessarily commentary or reception of AIA's efforts, it is a community effort. And I'm excited to see what 2021 will bring um, in less of a, a panic mode, but more of a progress and action mode. Um, I think that's where the Jedi conversation is moving, which is, which is good and it's about time. And we've had some, some gratifying highlights in that area as well. So um, there's a brand new NOMA chapter, National Organization of Minority Architects chapter that's been established in Colorado. Um, Ron Abo is the founding president of that group. He's of course the past president of AI Denver and AI Colorado, and he's now an at-large director on our board. So we think that relationship will be strengthened as, we, as, as we've been around since 1898 and they're first starting, we can help them uh, get to the, that, that long-standing and impactful um, phase of their development as an organization. The most popular single program of the entire year that we did was a conversation uh, about race. Um, it was in June, just days after the George Floyd protests came here to Colorado, and we had almost 200 people um, take part in that conversation. Um, and kind of like that 2030 commitment and the design data exchange that goes with it, there are tools out there for firms and individuals to use. So the guides to equitable practice um, have just been um, published in starting in 2018, just a few chapters at a time. Um, that's now fully rolled out and there's a lot of ways to, to for members and firms to, to not just say, I, I want to know more about this, but actually implement it. It's a great question. Um, and I, I'll go back to something Rachel said earlier. Um, this isn't a box that you check and put in a one-year plan. It's something that we just keep working on until it's taken for granted and part of our, our default, model, default mode of operation.
Well, thanks, everybody. <laughs>